I'm going to show you how to take this photo and turn it into this in Lightroom right after the intro. From now on, like your parents were. You are the secret force of hope. Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is Mo, a car photographer from Bahrain. If it's your first time around this channel and haven't done that yet, of course, because it's your first time, how can you do that anyway? Focus. If you haven't done that yet, go ahead, like and subscribe so you don't miss out on all the upcoming content for 2020. All right, so let's start with the basic adjustments. And that's what we usually do first, right? Before applying any color grading, any special effects or anything that we want to do in Lightroom, you need to get the basics done right. So as you can tell, the photo that we're looking at is underexposed. So let's try and fix that. And a lot of people will try and do that through raising out the shadows first. And um, don't do that. Don't do that first. First, let's get the exposure right, especially when you have such an underexposed photo. All right, so let's start doing this. And um, we're going to try and find a good spot. And I remember having it somewhere between here and there. And don't worry about blowing out the highlights. We're gonna fix that in a bit. So, yep, I think 220 is just good enough. Now we're going to drop the highlights because it just went way above. So let's drop the highlights using the highlight slider. And we're now going to raise a shadow. So let's try that. And that's going to be around 40, 44. I think it was okay. As in for the whites, I usually hold down the option and then look for a sweet spot. In our case, it's going to be, there you go. We started to see, yeah, that would be it. For the blacks, I'll be doing the same thing. And I'm going to drop it down. Okay, that's good. Now here's a trick. If you press J on the keyboard, you'll see where the highlights are um, really blown out and the shadow has been crushed. So you can fix that accordingly. For the highlights, I mean, we are going to, again, fix that later on. But for now, we can fix the blacks by just raising it up just a little, not too much. I think around there is just fine. Otherwise, yep. Press J and have a look at the before. All right, that wasn't the button. All right, let's have a look at the before, the after, great. Now that we have applied the global adjustment or the basic adjustments, I'm going to go ahead, since we are going to head for that look that we saw earlier, right? We've got to go ahead and uh, head to the calibration and that's where we're going to shift colors. Now there are a lot of tutorials about how to change the look of a photo using this panel down here. And uh, we're going to do that right now. Okay, so let's start with the shadows. And I just wanted to get a tint in the shadows. It's very subtle, very subtle, not too much. I think nine is just too much for the shadow. We're going to keep it around, around plus four. For the hue and saturation of the red, on the primary, you can see that I'm shifting the color a tad. I was aiming about somewhere in the 40s, as far as I remember. And we are going to increase its saturation to about 30 is just fine. I'm right, moving to the greens. I'm going to set it around 30. I'm looking at the photo. We're going to shift that hue in a bit as well. So don't worry about the look right now because we are just doing the basics to do color shifts later on and match the look that we're looking for. Saturation, I think that's a little bit maybe too much. Let's drop it down. We'll go around 17. And the blues. Yeah, I think it was somewhere around there. And for the saturation, it's going to be... There you go. So now that we have shifted the colors, let's see the before 
and this is the after. Great, now that we've added a lot of saturation, we have moved the colors left and right. It's now time to fix the saturation because it's a little bit over my taste. So I'm going to drop the saturation down to around the 40s, I think would be okay, yep. And I'm going to increase the vibrance, which is a smart saturation. That's what I call it. I don't know about you. What do you call it? All right, now I'm going to start playing around the hue and um, the HSL panel, that's what they call it. You have the hue, saturation, luminance. We'll start with the hue. And I'm going to play around and find a sweet spot. And I think for the reds, I like it. I like this tone better than this. So let's keep it here for now. And since this affects the reds as well, we're going to pull it somewhere around there. So, say, maybe minus 16 is just good. Yellows, or the yellows, you can see I'm looking at the yellow at the, here. This is, this is a good yellow and you've got some over there as well. So I'm going to drop it around there kind of like this color shift. Now for the green, you can see the greens here and we spoke about the green briefly. I don't like this. So I'm gonna go the opposite to complement the look that I'm aiming for. Now for the aqua, I'm looking at the chairs and I'm not going to move it a lot because I kind of like the color so far. and. Uh, we're going to change the saturation and maybe desaturate this part as well. The same thing goes with the blue. And the blues, so I don't want to move it a lot. I'm going to keep it there. Well, for the purple, I can't see if it's affecting the reds. Same thing with the magenta, so I'm going to keep it as it is. All right, so let's move to the saturation bit. And now we're going to uh, play with the saturation. And um, one thing that I'm gonna keep definitely is, is the red. So I'm going to increase the red, make sure it pops out because it has the color of, of the car itself. Yeah, let's keep it there. I mean, if we didn't like it, we can always come back and readjust. So this is editing the photo indestructibly. Is that a word? Yeah, it is the word. Okay, so for the orange, it is affecting the car slightly. I'm just gonna keep it there. For the yellows, however, looking up, yeah, I just keep it here, somewhere around there. For the green, however, I'm going to drop the saturation down. And I'm going to do the same thing with the aqua and the blue. And you can see now it's, we're getting that desaturation look. I'm just going to make sure I don't go way too down because I just need a little bit of that tone in the photo. So yeah, somewhere maybe around there is just fine. Great, I don't think these will affect so I'm just gonna drop them to a minus 100. So let's have a look before and after. We're getting there, we're shifting the colors quite nicely. Um, we, I'm getting that saturated look. That hue of the red is astonishing. Anyway, let's move to the luminance. And this kind of controls how bright a color is. And uh, I wouldn't want to go way too down or way too up. I might just drop it to 25 right now. And we can, like I said, we can always come back and adjust it later on. And I think minus 10 is just fine. I'll see that. Yeah, I think there is just fine as well. Over the greens, I'll drop that just a tad, like a dark. Same thing with the aqua. 
And that helps focus the look on the cars itself. Wow, that is going to be very tricky, so I don't want to move it a lot. I think somewhere around here is just fine. I don't think this is going to affect anything. Maybe just some parts of the car. Actually, I can see some parts of the car here. So I think we desaturated this and that that was gone. So let's bring back the saturation just a bit. Yep, that's better. All right, so let's have a look at the before, after, before, after, great. All right, so now let's apply some local adjustment and I'll start with a graduated filter and I'm gonna leave that somewhere here and I'm going to reset this. You can reset by holding the option key on the Mac keyboard and click reset. Great. I'm not sure how that works on Windows, but it's one of the keys, either Alt, Control or one of the keys. So I'm going to start dropping these. Now I don't want it to be too dark. I don't want this. This looks bad. But maybe something like that would work. And let's get that a bit of sharpness, a bit of texture and clarity to, you know, give that speed feel. I mean, it will emphasize the lines on the road and uh, will make the cars look as if they're coming really fast. Just a tiny bit here. Great, done for this filter. And I'm um, going to hold the brush, reset this. I think this is just a little bit smaller. I'm just going to paint across here and there. All right. Well, you can do this in a better position. 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 Yeah, that's the word. And I'm going to drop the exposure just down a bit and bring the highlights down. Furthermore, like so. Yeah. So I don't want it to look too fakey. I'll do the same here. Make the brush a little bit smaller. Uh, all right, I need to be very precise with this, but you get the idea. I mean, I can zoom in and stuff, but for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna keep it the way it is. And um, yeah, yeah I'm not, I am not. don't think I'm gonna do anything to this. Click done, I'll start a new brush, reset this, and I'm going to make it warm, warmer. I'll increase saturation a bit. And I'm just gonna go across here. I just wanted that to pop more, the light coming from up there. And there you go. Great, I think it looks great, I like it. I don't know about you, but I kind of like where it's heading and I'm gonna click done. Now I'm going back to the red and the hue. Let's see if we can fix that. Uh, I think I, this is, looks good. I like this hue of the red. As in for the saturation. Somewhere around there is good. Luminance is fine as well. I'm just gonna increase it a bit. There you go. Now, one more thing that you can do to um, get that look is, you know, lifting the blacks. Now, you wouldn't want to lift it so much that it's so obvious. Let's just fix that. So I'm just gonna create some points here. And then I'm going to start lifting the blacks. And you can see as I do this, the blacks get affected. 
somewhere around there is just fine. I mean, you can also increase and control the effects using this and this point, these two points. But that's something that's really up to you. Very subjective. Some people like it, some people don't. So there you go. Yeah, let's have a look at the before. This is the before. And this is the after. All right, let's say, let's start adding a bit of clarity to the photo, just to give it that nice contrast look. And you wouldn't want that, although it kind of looks cool. No, it doesn't. All right, so let's just bring it down here. Add a bit of texture, maybe. Not too much. Mm, let's try warming up the photo. Yeah, just a bit, not too much. I think somewhere around there is just, that looks great. That looks great. Okay, let's go down. Now let's add a bit of sharpening as well. And I'm going to mask it out like so. So you, again, pressing the option key on the keyboard. And since we have introduced a lot of noise, maybe you would want to use a noise reduction. But of course you wouldn't want the painterly look. So we want something that is reasonable. Now the thing is, we sh I shot this really underexposed, so that brings up a lot of noise and the blacks and the details. So somewhere around there, I think it's fine. Although I think it's just too much, but yeah, let's remove the chromatic aberration. One way to hide the noise is adding grain to the photo. So let's do that. We can add a bit of grain. So we create and introduce our own noise in that. And I'm going to add a vignette now. Don't do this. Try and keep it very subtle. Somewhere around there. Yep. Feather that. And voila. I think we're done. Let's have a look at the before, after. All right, YouTube, we've reached the end of this tutorial. Now, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you in the next video.